こんにちは。私はチミです。今日は日本について私の意見を述べたいと思います。I am very fluent in Japanese.I recently just spent three nights in Kyoto and three nights in Tokyo with my whole family, my mom, my dad, and my sister. Now, I've been to Japan twice before, but my family has never been there. So, by default, I was the tour guide. I planned our itinerary, I booked our hotels and our Shinkansen, and I just planned out where we were gonna go in general. I actually had to use my brain, you know, I couldn't just be a little follower, a little sheep like I had been in the past, you know, just following the group leader. I actually had to blaze my own trail, I had to chart my own course. As a result, I kind of had like some new perspective. Perspectives and new opinions on Japan. Yeah, so let's start with Kyoto. Kyoto was super beautiful this time of year. We went in late September and it was just really pleasant and sunny. It wasn't too hot, it wasn't too humid. We stayed in Kyoto City, specifically in the Higashiyama ward. I booked a hotel called M's Inn Higashiyama. It was on the lower end side, but it was honestly still pretty nice.、Uh, it had four beds. It was a little small, but it was a good bang for our buck. And it was really conveniently located next to the train station, as well as the Jion district, which is a famous geisha district. Geisha are essentially Japanese hostesses with the white face paint. We were also near the Nishiki market and the Kamo River. Okay, so let's start with food. I thought the food in Kyoto was good, but honestly, I wasn't blown away. And maybe that has to do with the fact that I was in the Jion district, which is known for its more upscale restaurants. But I do think that some of the food wasn't value. I wouldn't want to say that it's a tourist trap or anything, because, you know, that kind of implies malicious intent, which I don't think that they have malicious intent to scam tourists or anything. But I do think we were getting kind of small portions, and the quality was, you know, it was decent, but it wasn't anything to write home about. A classic example of this was actually this one Japanese barbecue or yakiniku place. It was actually the only place that I'd actually made a reservation for, and I was really excited to try it out because it had really good Google reviews. Which I realize now you should not trust those because a lot of those are made by foreigners, and a lot of the foreigners do not know what they're talking about. The locals would probably not be writing Google reviews. I think they use like a different app for like rating food and stuff. Anyways, made this reservation for my family. We went up, we had to like climb two sets of stairs, which I thought was weird. Usually I don't have to climb stairs to get into a restaurant, so that was already a red flag. When we got there, the second red flag was all of the cooks seemed to be very young. And so we were like, okay, well, you know, maybe there's just, they're just all prodigies or something.、The、food was like presented pretty well, but I thought that the portions were very small. I did look at the prices beforehand, but it was kind of a little misleading because I thought that we would be getting priced for four people, but the price was actually only for one person. So we only ordered two sets. But yeah, the food was, it was okay, it was good, but I would not go back again. But I do want to talk about some of the good places that we went to. The first one is this sushi place in the Shiki Market.、Uh, I'll put it up on the screen. There's like a few revolving sushi places. I don't think revolving sushi is meant to be taken like, oh, this is gonna be a super high class, super fresh sushi. How is it? It's not, it's revolving sushi. It's supposed to be on the cheaper end, but it was still really fresh and you could get Toro on end for like one or two bucks. It was totally worth it. I personally had a good time and my family had a good time too. So, would definitely recommend checking out any of the revolving sushi places. We also checked out this donut place. It was called Koei Donuts. It was just such a cool vibe. The whole inside of the donut place was just so cool. Like the architecture and everything. Like you could, like America could never, like we would not be able to compete with this. Like our donut places do not look like this at all. We picked up a few donuts and some coffee and we had them, and oh my gosh, they were really good. Like, they were really, really good. Crazy good. Not that sweet. Not、wow. that sweet. Yeah. The price. 
you know, the vibe, the atmosphere was good, 10 out of 10, the food was good, 10 out of 10, uh, service was, well, it's Japan, so it's 10 out of 10. Third place I wanna recommend is this cold udon place at the base of the Ushimi Inari Shrine. I don't remember the name, but I'll put it up on the screen. It's like the best meal to have after a long hike in Fushimi Inari and you come back down and you just grab cold udon noodles, super refreshing. And I feel like because it's cold, the noodles are actually more firm, which have more of a bouncy texture to them. And so yeah. The last restaurant I want to recommend, again, I don't know the name, but I'll put it up on the screen, but it's this izakaya restaurant. There's a lot of izakayas in Japan, but um, this one in particular was a local recommendation. You know it's local immediately because they don't start speaking to you in English. English. The server actually told me that she thought I was Japanese, but a, a telltale sign that it is local is if there's a lot of Japanese people in there and not very many foreigners or none at all, and they don't have an English menu. Fine. The menu was weird, it like didn't really have prices. Usually I just get out Google Translate and just like take a picture of the menu and try to translate it. Thankfully my waitress, she was actually an English major, she helped me throughout the whole experience. It was probably one of the best meals I've ever had and I paired it with like different types of soju, like a sweet soju and a more bitter soju it was just a great experience like it really felt like I was it was like a fine dining experience and I do think it was more on the upscale side but it wasn't honestly even that much I think I spent probably like 30 bucks in total and it was like a five or six course meal but yeah it was a great time I even got to talk with the chef afterwards and you know he was really curious about me and I kind of talked to him through the waitress who was kind of translating back and forth we talked about like different animes that we watched and like bonded over Boku no Hero and I felt so welcomed. This was my favorite experience and I would definitely recommend just checking out a local restaurant, just walking into a restaurant or even better, just getting a local recommendation, maybe from a mutual friend or something like that. Okay, so activities. Uh, let's start with the Fushimi Inari Shrine. So that's one of the most popular tourist attractions. It's a Shinto shrine at the base of the Inari Mountain. If you get off the train there and you start walking up, you'll notice that there's actually a lot of people selling souvenirs and food. Like we got some squid and we ate them by the bridge. And then um, a lot of the vendors are selling like these foxes. I actually have one of them with me right now. They're messengers and protectors of Inari, who is the god of harvest. There's all these fox statues that are supposed to be these protectors and if you keep walking up, you'll finally get to the shrine and for many people who can afford it, they funded these tangerine colored Tori gates and they have been donated by people with inscriptions of wishes they hope will come true. It, it is a little bit crowded, so I think the recommendation is to go early in the morning. We did not because we were just coming back from somewhere else. And I remember from the last time I went there, when I went there with my friends, we actually went off the path and like, we took a different path to the top of the mountain and it was through this beautiful bamboo forest. So I took my family there and we walked a little bit, but then um, it was actually kind of hot at that time and so we kind of started making our way back but if you keep going up the crowd starts to thin out because you know people don't want to be walking there's more opportunities to take photos and stuff i know it was really annoying for me when people would take photos right then and there because when you stop you actually stop the flow of traffic because everyone has to go in between these tory gates there was this one dad who was just like standing there in the middle of the gate like just taking a phone call and it's like Dude, like, keep walking, you know? The next thing on my itinerary that we needed to go to was Kiyomizu Dera, which is a Buddhist temple. This was one of the most famous temples in Kyoto and highly recommended by everyone I asked. It was only like a short walk up like a slight gradient from our hotel. And we went in the morning, so we beat the crowd and it was beautiful, like walking up the street. We took pictures at the temple. If you keep going up, there's actually this like pretty interesting place called the womb of Buddha's mother. You basically descend a set of stairs and it's like your worst fear if you're claustrophobic. It's pitch black, it's pretty cramped and you go in one at a time and you kind of feel your way around the walls, which is supposed to be, you know, the womb. And 
you eventually get to this light. You see this light and it's a stone and you're supposed to touch the stone and make a wish. I don't remember what I wished for. I don't think I wished for anything. So yeah, if you guys want to do that, if you guys want to walk around in the darkness inside of Buddha's mother's womb, then would highly recommend. And yeah, we went back down. We got like some food, uh, mostly just like desserts. And it was just a, it was a good time. It, it, was a, it was a good time. I would definitely recommend going in the morning because it started to get right, real busy. How was it? But it was so beautiful. How the whole it? temple was beautiful, but also just the surrounding area was beautiful. And honestly, I liked it a lot more than Fushimi Inari just because it was a lot more peaceful in my opinion. And it was more laid back and yeah, it wasn't like super hot yeah. either um, because we weren't like climbing up a mountain or anything. Okay, so the last topic I want to cover is exploring. So these are things that I didn't put in my itinerary. And I think unplanned experiences can be some of the most beautiful and memorable experiences you can have. And um, well, I guess unless you're talking about like pregnancies or something. But yeah, most of the exploring I did was done solo. So I wasn't with my family. I did most of my exploring at night. Uh, I wanted to actually go with my sister to check out one of the clubs there. It's called Kitsune Club. It's on uh, Kiyamachi Street. And there's like a series of clubs there and we were gonna check it out, but she fell asleep. So I just went out alone and I took my camera with me. And I wanted to take some cool pictures, some cool like nighttime pictures. Anyways, I stopped by 7-Eleven to get some necessary snacks. I got some onigiris and a bottle of whiskey. I thought, you know, might be a fun time to just like drink a little bit and walk around. I actually walked near the Kamo Riverbank, which was actually a really cool experience. Everyone was super quiet and super peaceful and respectful. No one was making a ton of noise, but there were a lot of people um, next to the riverbank and not a lot of people there alone. It was mostly couples. and. It was actually one of the few places where I saw people displaying like PDA, which I thought was very interesting because Japanese people usually don't display any PDA. I sat by the riverbank and just like, you know, pondered. I don't know, it was just a really peaceful, fun experience. There were actually some Americans next to the riverbank. They were the only ones making noise, but they were playing some music, which I thought uh, really lifted up the mood and the spirits of like everyone else. There were a lot of people like nearby that I think gravitated towards them. They were holding up a sign to like not litter on the Kamo River Bank, which I thought was very, very cute. After that, I walked to Kiyomachi Street, which is where all the clubs were. It was okay. There, were, there weren't a lot of people. I think it was a weekday, so it wasn't anything crazy, but I don't know. A part of me still feels like a little weird going to a nightclub alone, especially in a foreign country. But instead, I actually crossed the river and went to the Jian district at night. Now, this is where it starts to get a little weird. It was around 12, maybe 1 at this time, 1 a.m. And so I was pretty much alone. There was like not a lot of people. And I don't know, being in Japan at night feels a little eerie. Um, and I realize now why it was eerie, um, actually. So, I, I wanted to go to the bathroom, right? So I looked up restroom on Google Maps and man, Google Maps really did me wrong this time. There was one restroom that was open, apparently, and it was near this Buddhist temple. What was it called? Okay, it was called the Kodaji Temple and there's like a restroom like before you get to the temple. So I went there, but the whole time I felt like something else was there and there was no one there. I'm getting goosebumps like <laughs> right now, but I look it up on the map like later, you know, this is like many days later. And I realize that it's actually right next to like two cemeteries. It, it's not like super, super close, but it's like, there's like a bamboo forest and then there's two cemeteries. I, I think I was feeling the presence of some spirits. They were like fooling around with me. Actually, there's a few cemeteries. There's a third one um, a little further away, but yeah. Uh, it was a little unnerving and I remember walking back and trying to get back to my hotel and uh, I come across like this shrine, another Shinto shrine, and I'm like trying to read like what some of the inscriptions are saying and then I like 
hear like footsteps and I freak out. It's just these two people probably walking back home. They were probably like, what is this guy just doing here? He's just stopped at this, at the shrine, like having a quarter life crisis or something. But uh, I walked back home, back to the, to the hotel and, oh, by the way, I did not take any pictures. Uh, because I realized I forgot my SD card in my laptop at home. So that was a fail. But I think I got to, you know, be more in the moment and it's still beautiful even though it was a little eerie. I, I think the, the streets are just so clean and no one's making noise or anything. It's really like a dead town. Like everyone's just like quiet, everyone's going to sleep, everyone's like being respectful, which I think we could really adopt some of that. In, in America.